Greetings from Trinity University and San Antonio, Texas. This is the Spring 2020 International Student Virtual Town Hall Session, and it is hosted by the International Student and Scholar Services Office. I am the Assistant Director, Dr. Laura Rodriguez Amaya. In the next 30 minutes or so, okay, so this is our agenda. In the next 30 minutes or so, I'm gonna share with you some information about on-campus summer housing, what you can expect for fall 2021, and important information about I-20s and visas for, this, for your summer travels. At the very end, I will share with you how to submit questions about the information that we can have shared with you after you finish viewing the recording. Now, I'm excited to share with you that this year, Trinity University will be accepting applications for on-campus housing. This application period will start on Monday, April the 12th, and it will close on April the 23rd. The students will be notified on April the 28th. So I, so this process is really an application process. There's just not enough space on campus to house all the students that need summer housing. However, the university will prioritize those students with a special circumstances. So make sure that you take your time to be able to relate your special circumstances and the need and your needs for on-campus housing. Some things to consider as you look at your options for uh, summer housing is, is the rate that you will pay on campus. Uh, it's expected that the rate will go for $153 per week that you ha will have limited access to kitchen space. There might be a dining option um, available as well. And the COVID-19 clinic will be operational through the summer to support our students is staying on campus. If you have more, if you have questions about this or need more information, reach out to Residential Life and take a look at that email that you have received about the on-campus housing. You should have all the inform information that you need and a contact email address if you have further questions. Now, full operational plans. I know that some of you are waiting for this information. The university will publish its full operational plans soon in the next couple of weeks, we're hoping. But this is what I can share with you today. Fall 2021 will look more like fall 2019 than fall 2020. That means that we're hoping to come back in the fall with in-person learning, share residence hall suites, and regular academic calendar. Of course, the university is ready to pivot and be flexible if the pandemic situation changes. However, we're very hopeful that we will be able to come back on campus and welcome our students back to our classrooms and share spaces. Now, I understand that many of you, many international students will continue to face important barriers for in-person learning. If that is your situation, please make sure to fill out the student the International Student Success Survey that you will receive in a couple of weeks. I really encourage all of you to fill out that survey. And I'll share with you a little bit more why that is at the end of the presentation. 
Again, just keep an eye on that email coming out in a couple of weeks from the administration, sharing with you the full operational plans. And now we have Ms. Jessie Yang, the ISSS advisor with information on I-20s and visas, so important for you as you plan your summer and fall travel. Hello, I am Jessie Jia. I am your international student advisor. And today I am going to share some of the F1 regulations and uh, CVs guidelines with them to help you make your plan for the fall semester. However, uh, our guideline here is based on our understanding of the current CVs guideline and regulations and CVs has not informed uh, or sent us new guidelines for the fall 2021 semester. So the information today we communicate with you are uh, based on our understanding of the current guideline. But if CVs send out a new guideline, uh, a new regulation, and we will inform everyone uh, as soon as we receive them. So, so now we are trying to cover uh, all students under these current guidelines and tell you what you would need to do or what plan you want to make based on the current guideline. So for current students, means students who have started their semester at Trinity and is continue, continuing to study at Trinity in fall 2021 as F1 international students uh, will follow the guideline for our current students uh, guideline. So we have developed three scenarios for our current students. The first scenario is that some students decided to study outside of the US virtually. Maybe you're already doing so during the spring 2021 semester. And for those students, you will still maintain the F1 status um, and also maintain the F1 status under, um, actually you will maintain the F1 status and you will need to uh, fulfill all the requirements that uh, required by your F1 student status, which means first you will need to maintain at least 12 credit hours per semester even you are studying outside the US. And also if you uh, have an internship, off-campus internship or um, off-campus employment, if the companies are in the US, you will need to apply for the CPT and we can do this remotely. Um, and if you will need to apply for reduced course load, it means you need to uh, drop below 12 credit hours, then you have to apply through our office. So basically you follow all of the um, F1 regulation as you are studying inside the US. And for students who are studying inside the US on campus off, or off campus, um, you are like what you did before, just maintain your F1 status. And uh, for those students, you will need to let us know uh, if you move to a new address, the regulations uh, require you to report your address to the ISSS within 10 days of moving. So make sure you do that if you move, especially students who are living off campus, because we will not receive notification from the school about your moving. For students living on campus, we usually receive notification from residence life about it if you need to change your dorm. And some students may need to graduate in summer 2021 or fall 2021. For those students, you can choose to study outside the US or inside the US. But 
once you decide to uh, apply for OPT, you must come to the US to apply, apply physically. Uh, you must be physically inside the US at the time when you apply. So make sure you communicate with us on this issue when you decide uh, you wanted to apply for the OPT. Um, for our new students in fall 2021, we also developed three scenarios for you. Uh, the first scenario is that some students who entered the US at, uh, the first time means they did not have an F1 status before. Um, they will need to apply, uh, they will need to obtain a brand new I-20 established the first time a brand new service number and obtain an F1 visa. For those students, we have required you to take at least one in-person class uh, so that you can come to the US. Uh, this is required for the current, uh, from the current CVS guideline. And we have uh, already make a plan for you, which is we have a class that you would uh, have to register to maintain your at least one in-person class during the fall 2021 semester. And for some students, they may be transfer students or they have studied in the US high schools before. For those students, they have already had the F1 status with their previous institution. So they may not need to establish a brand new F1 status. Instead, they will transfer the F1 status from, from their high school. And um, they may not need to apply for a visa, depends on whether they, their visa has expired or not when they come. Um, for those students, they will not need to uh, take a class that is in person, at least one class that is in person according to the current CVS guideline. And some students may choose to start the first semester with Trinity outside the US. For those students, you can, uh, you can be a Trinity student. You can do everything with registrar, with um, academic advising to establish your student status with Trinity, but you will not have an F1 uh, immigration status with ISSS means that we will not send you an I-20, we will not send you a uh, visa instruction because you will not have an F1 status. Um, and if, for example, if you wanted to enter the US in the middle of the semester, um, we can do that, but you just need to contact our office to obtain necessary documents and instruction so that you can enter the US. Um, but we usually do not recommend students to enter the U.S. in the middle of the semester because it involves a lot of arrangements and uh, uh, travel arrangements and uh, school arrangements. So if you choose to start a fall semester in, uh, outside the U.S., um, we we'll recommend you stay outside the U.S. during the whole fall semester. And if you seek to enter in spring, we will help you do that. Okay, these are um, the CVS regulation that we have received and we interpreted and provided the best practices for you guys to refer to. If you have any questions, let us know. Again, this guideline from us is based on the current CVS guideline. If there is a new CVS guideline come out and there might be changes, we will always let you know the first time we receive it. Okay. So in this slide, we are going to uh, talk about the visa situations for all of our F1 students. Many of you are concerned about the visa and your travel to the United States. Um, and we are also uh, focusing on this recently and trying to get the most updated information we can to help you. 
Um, but for now, this is what we can present to you and situations may change later. So um, uh, we are one of the resource for you and you also wanted to check uh, all other resources you can get from the US Embassy or Consulate or in the media. So as for now, the visa situation is still not very friendly to uh, travelers to the US, um, no matter it's F1 visa or other tourist visa type. And many US embassies and consulates have suspended or delayed processing of visas as of today, April 13th, 2021. So here are suggestions for you. We have three scenarios uh, for different kinds of students. Uh, for students who are residing outside the US and seek to enter the US to study in fall 2021, if you do not have an F1 visa or if your visa has expired uh, before you enter the US, please continue to check the website of the US Embassy or Consulate in your country for visa services update. And I am going to share this website with you uh, so that you know where you will go to. So on this website, it's uh, the link is www.usembassy.gov. Uh, you will be able to find the U.S. embassies or consulates in your country, all the locations of them, and be able to view their website under uh, your country's U.S. embassies website, uh, the uh, uh, entry. So you will be able to find the U.S. consulate in your country and uh, try to obtain the most up-to-date information on their website. And also there are all kinds of media uh, channels in your country that you can rely on to get the information. Okay, let's go back to the slide. So the second scenario is that uh, for students who are residing in the U.S., uh, we recommend to, uh, to not travel outside of the U.S. at this time if you will need a new visa before returning. Um, if you have to travel outside the U.S., we recommend you review the embassy and consulate's visa appointment information where you will be traveling to before you make final travel plans. Uh, the US, the ISS does not know how long this suspension will last. So keep yourself well informed and make a detailed plan before traveling. Suspension or a delay of the visa processing. Uh, some of the countries still have the visa open, a visa service open, but uh, it may take them a longer time to process your renewal of the visa. And we may have some students who have already had their visa expired and always there are students ask us this question. Can I stay in the United States if my visa expired? The answer to you is yes. You can stay in the United States with a valid F1 visa, even with an expired, uh, with a valid F1 status. Uh, if, um, if your visa expired, uh, because the visa is an entry stamp for you to enter the US. Once you enter the US, you do not need a visa. You just need a valid F1 status to be able to stay and study inside the US. So if you are inside the US, you can continue to study and stay under F1 status with an expired visa. And if your visa has, uh, if you're outside the United States and seek to enter at this point, uh, 
if your visa has expired already, you will need to renew the visa using the uh, current F1 I-20, using the most up-to-date F1 I-20. So we recommend to do this, like to renew your visa as soon as possible. Do not wait until the last minute uh, to renew your visa and seek entry to the US because the situation, visa situation now is uh, still not very uh, friendly to all the travelers to the US. And here I'm going to share um, the other website with you to help you uh, renew your visa. Okay, this is the website um, under the travel.state.gov. And this website has the visa for, and make sure you remember this link. So this is the page for F1 student J1 and other visa type visitors to learn about how to apply and how to renew the visa. Applying for a visa and renewing for a visa is similar. They all require you to fill out forms, fill out the application forms, pay the fees and uh, show them the required documentations. So if you have question about how to renew your visa, just go to this website and visit and obtain the most up-to-date information about visa and uh, visa application and renewal processing. Okay, let's go back to the slide. And here we collected some information for some of the countries um, about their visa situation. And this, we have a report of the visa processing situation in those countries, but not all of the countries. But I, um, I'm going to briefly talk about the situations in those countries. So uh, from the report, of AIRC, American International Recruitment Council, we noticed that up until March 15, 2021, uh, these countries have good visa processing uh, timeline. So Indonesia, Nepal, Saudi, Arab uh, Saudi Arabia, and Taiwan has no problem processing visa in a normal speed. Uh, in Sweden and most of the European countries, they can schedule summer semester appointment, visa appointments, um, but they have not started fall semester visa processing yet. And a lot of students, a lot of our students are from uh, Asian countries and American, uh, Latin American countries. So here we have some information. Um, about China, India, Bangladesh, Brazil, and Brazil. Um, you know that China and Brazil were under the entry restriction of the US. Um, the US required those, the people who seek to enter the United States from China and Brazil, um, if they have stayed in China and Brazil for, the, for 14 days before they enter the US, they will not be allowed to enter. Um, so that's another uh, problem for people who seek to enter the US from these two countries, uh, other than the visa processing delay. So in China, currently students are receiving emails with visa appointment cancellations. There is a 13 month backlog and no visa are being processed. The first available appointment is August 19 for Guangzhou. Prediction is that 150,000 appointments are needed to meet demand. So for students who are coming from China, um, they may seek uh, some alternative way to uh, enter the US or even just start their semester or take classes uh, in the fall online with Trinity. And uh, for 
to Brazil, all appointments are canceled uh, in Brazil due to COVID-19 and flights to the US are prohibited. Uh, and according to the report, some students were traveling to Panama or other countries to apply for a visa. And um, the country next to uh, China, which are India and Bangladesh, surprisingly, their visa approval rate are high. Um, and in Bangladesh, there is no visa delay or cancellation for those people who seek to enter the US. So here are just some of the countries that we listed, and uh, I listed on the report. And for those who are from all the rest of the countries in the world, please, as I said, always check the media and um, your US embassy or consulate's website to obtain the most up-to-date visa appointment information. And I will recommend you to check it as often as possible so that once there is a visa, uh, uh, visa interview available time, just book the time as soon as possible so that yeah, once it changed, you can either get a notification or if it didn't change, you can get your visa as soon as possible. Okay. So always let us know if you have any questions or problems about your F1 status and the visa processing. And we'll try to help you as much as we can. Thank you for uh, watching this webinar and I will see you in the Q&A session on Friday and answer the questions if you have any. Thank you, Jesse, for uh, all that information that is so vital for our students to have and understand. Lastly, we want to uh, share with you how you can share with us your questions after watching this recording and how to give us your input uh, through a survey that, that we're gonna be sharing with you. So in the email, uh, all of you receive an email with uh, this recording. And so in the content of that email, there's a link to the questions and answer form. We're gonna collect all those questions and we're gonna have some time on April 6th, 16th to answer those questions live. You, you're more than welcome to, to join our session so you can follow up on your questions or ask any new questions. Uh, we're gonna record that session and then we're gonna make it available to all of you. Also, please keep an eye for the International Student Success Survey. Uh, we will send you the link of the survey through an email and we ask you that you fill out the survey because it will give us important information to support you through a transition to the fall 2021. Thank you all of you for joining us, for watching this recording. We are looking forward to see, seeing you on campus in the fall. We will continue to provide information to you through email, through uh, asynchronous uh, sessions like this one, so that you can have the information that you need to, to plan ahead for the summer and the fall. So thank you for watching and we hope, we hope that uh, we see you soon. If you have any questions, uh, again, use a Q&A for issues concerning what we cover and others about summer and fall preparation. But you know that you can also always 
reach us at IS at trinity.edu.